Hi, my name is Faith. Hey, I'm Steve Murawski. And this is our first episode of our new podcast, Your Friendly Neighborhood Home Inspector. Today we'll be talking about the private sewer repair program that we have here in Springfield and you might have in your town. So what made you even think about the private sewer repair program? It was on the list of some of the topics we could talk about. Ah, the list, the <laughs> famous list. So the private sewer repair program, that goes under this category of water. We'll circle back to this in a second, but whenever we look at a house, the most important thing is water. Water is what will destroy a home. You know, gravity's not gonna take it down. The wind rarely takes it down. Water ultimately ruins your house. And then the gravity takes it down after it rots away. We're gonna have a lot of podcasts that talk about water management, water issues uh, related to mold, drainage, grading. But this private sewer repair program is a city funded program. We're here in the city of Springfield, Missouri. I think it's the best Springfield in the whole nation. I think there's, what, 50 of them? It sure is the biggest. It's the biggest Springfield in the whole nation. Okay, so this, this integrated private sewer repair program, we as inspectors interact with this because we're familiar with the program. And what it is, is the city has a, a, a fund. They've worked with the EPA, and they're directed to try reducing pollution, and they have a whole thing in their plate of different aspects of reducing water pollution and other pollutions in the environment. And this program was developed and set up as the most cost-effective way of reducing rainwater and stormwater from entering the sanitary sewer system. Whenever you're um, preventing water from getting into your basement, your sump pump is supposed to pump the water into the outside of your building, not into any to, sewer. To daylight. That's to daylight. the reference we make. Is we want this. If you so, if you have a, a basement home and in crawl space homes too, you might have a sump pump. And the sump pump is to collect, uh, not sewage, it's groundwater and rainwater that infiltrates into your foundation. And what we look for is we want to discharge that to daylight, meaning outside. I'll tell my clients, if, you, if you're directing the water from your house all the way to your neighbor's crawl space, that's great. I just want it away from your house. And I say that half jokingly, but I'm making the point of getting the water away from the building. So it's very easy when you're putting a sump pump in, in a basement or crawl space, there's a sewer line right there. And like, well, we'll just tap into the city sewer line because that pipe already goes away. And doing this, it can cause like sinks to flood. It can cause a lot of issues for your home. I know here- not, But not necessarily your home. It can cause a lot of issues for other homes. I know here at our office- Right. Um, our sub pump pumps outside, but a bunch of people in the neighborhood around us pump into the sewer system. So whenever it rains really hard, if we're not careful, the sink in our basement can back up. So we tend, whenever it's rained very hard, to not use the sink in our basement because it can cause some bad issues because it's sewer water then, not rain water that's being pumped so, into your So building. this is, this is a, a trigger warning. If you have small children, you may want to take them outside for this next little bit. But we learned the hard way. We, when we bought this building, this office, we took the extra step of having the sewer line scoped to figure out you know, where the city sewer was. And the camera went 70 feet into the back parking lot, then it dropped straight down 15 feet to the main. And I said, oh, we won't have any problems with backups. We're 15 feet above the sewer line. And I cut off the sewer pipes in the building because we were doing a total remodel and we had a totally open sewer pipe in the basement floor. And I came into the office on a Friday night to check on things because we had a big heavy rain. I saw a water line four and a half feet high in the basement. Luckily, there was nothing in the basement and we're in the middle of the remodel. At the time, the water was back down to six inches. And what I figured out was that when all the sump pumps in the neighborhood kicked on, they filled up that main line 15 feet below the building, pressurized it, filled up my lateral pipe. All that water entered my basement up to the distance of four feet. And then as the city treatment plant could handle the water, it subsided back down to the level of the pipe, which was four or six inches above the ground. We got a couple gallons of bleach and some pressure washers, and we had to sterilize the whole basement walls. Fortunately, most of the water in the basement was just rainwater, diluted, but not all of it. So, so be considerate, a, neighbor. Make sure your sub pump, if you get one installed, it's pumping to where it's supposed to be, so that way you don't make your neighbor's basement act as ditches until it drains. Yeah, that's exactly it. Acted as a retention ditch for that water. So now we don't we don't have that problem anymore. Two reasons: one, we've got the sewer line hooked up. But there's another reason. We have, on our 100-year-old building, we have a backflow prevention valve. We actually have 
two of them because I'm a crazy home inspector and that's how I roll. But what that does, it's a flapper. And if the water on the city side gets pressurized, it can't back up into my building because it hits this flapper and it stops. So during the moments when all those lines are pressurized, we actually can't use our bathroom because there's nowhere for the water to drain to because of that pressure. But that only lasts about an hour. So it's only during uh, the Noah's Ark floods. The really heavy rains in the spring. The we, sometimes, April sometimes we call them uh, frog drowning or drowners, <laughs> toad, toad drowners, something like that. Let's now get back to the topic at hand, this ah. um, sewer um, or... <laughs> Private sewer repair program. So it covers these sump pumps. That's, that's one thing. It also covers uh, on-cap cleanouts. So outside your building, you'll have a cleanout for the sewer line. They should all be there, and then every 100 feet in your yard, you should have one. Lots of times the caps get damaged by lawnmowers, and they knock the cap off or they crack it or leave a hole in it. Well, if that's in a low spot of your yard, you actually have a drain in your yard that drains to the city sewer. So water, rainwater just pours into them and puts a lot of pressure on our system. Or if it had a backup, you would have a little poop fountain in your yard as the sewer water shot out of that pipe. Either way, you want to have that uncapped clean out repaired. And in some older buildings, the downspouts from your gutters, if they just sort of disappear, especially like into a clay tile, in the older part of the city, we have uh, some combined sewer. Uh, when we're a much smaller city, they would combine the uh, sewer water and the, and the runoff water from your house into the same system. So if you have any of these things, the on-cap clean-out, the sump pump, or the downspout that disappears, uh, and when I say sump pump, I mean a sump pump that's draining to the city sewer, the city has this program where they'll fix that. I don't think we touched on what a downspout that disappears in. Is that just a downspout that you have a pipe going through your yard that drains somewhere else farther away from your house? No, if you, know, if you know where the end of it is, that's the second half of the system. If it's a corrugated black pipe on a modern house, it's probably not going into the city sewer. You'll probably see this in the center, city center, and they'll go into like a clay terracotta, or they call it um, vitrified clay tile uh, vertically on the side of the house. Uh, this office had them, and we, when we were rerouting our downspouts with new modern pipes, I dug them up. So a lot of them have been abandoned, but you want to sort of know where, if you have those. So the private sewer repair program, that's, uh -huh. a, that's a government program. That's it, a city, yeah, it's a city uh, federal, federal government funded it, the EPA, and then the city's managing it. Okay. And is there like an initial cost that you have to pay for that? Or Great if, question. if I wanted to do it, what would I have to do? So the city has zones are doing, and we can put a link on our, on our podcast here on how to find out if, if you live in the zone that's currently being done. I think they've done a half dozen zones on the north side of town, and now they're doing this sort of center, city center one. Um, and even if you're outside the zone, you still want to try to reduce this water infiltration and we'll touch on that and why you'd want to do that, even if, even if you were responsible for paying. But uh, with this program, the city will send out two people to do an evaluation. It takes them about 45 minutes. Uh, someone has to be home. An 18-year-old or older uh, adult has to be home to let them in. And you can't have your two-year-old allowed. No, no two-year-olds opening the door. Yeah, you can't just unlock it. They'll come there and do an evaluation, and they'll see if you have any of these conditions we just talked about. And if you do, they'll work on a program uh, to correct those. You can pick the plumber off the list that they have, or you just let the city pick the plumber that'll come out and do it. And the city pays the plumber's bill. So this actually has no cost to the homeowner cool. if you're in the zone. With this program, you wouldn't be financially responsible for anything. It's just a matter of organizing a time for the plumber to get out. Organizing first the city to come out and do the evaluation, and then you work with the city and the plumber. Uh, the plumber will contact you, and you set it all up. But yeah, there's no cost to the homeowner if you're in the zone. So basically, the property owner reviews and signs a voluntary repair agreement, then there's no obligation to them. Then the property owner selects a plumber from the qualified local plumber list, or they assign the city, and, you know, tell them to pick one. Uh, work will be performed with no additional charge to the owner. The plumber will contact the property owner directly. They'll schedule the work. The plumber will perform the work. And then a representative of the city, they'll evaluate the work and provide the property owner with ownership information. This is to show that you had the work done. And the city finally will pay the plumber. That sounds super cool. It's a good program. And you, as you can imagine, this is not an inexpensive program. This, I mean, plumbers are expensive anyways, and now we've got the city paying the plumbers, and the work could be uh, extensive in your own house. 
So you might be wondering why would the city want to go through all this effort? I think when I was researching this online, I saw that the city said this on their website, that for every dollar that the city spends on this program, they save $11. Yeah, because they're able to avoid larger sewer lines, repairs, floods. So yeah, we're, we're trying to make the entire system, the sewer system for the city, uh, not be taxed meaning taxed by the volume of water that we input on it. It is fiscally responsible for the city to pay to have these repairs done in private homes because, like you said, we spend a dollar in that house and it's $11 we don't have to spend in the street trying to repair the problem that that house is causing. Yeah, because water backup in streets from sewer drains not being able to handle enough rainwater causes right. things like potholes and just a bunch of other road damage that the city would want to avoid. So this one program can fix a lot of the costs. Right. So with this program, I don't have to worry about them coming into my house and finding anything and saying like, oh, you, this should have been fixed, this should have been found, da 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 da, -da. this is your responsibility. Correct, they're not the sewer police. They're there they're, they're working with the homeowners of the city to help the homeowners of the city. So they're not gonna come in and find a problem with your sewer hookup and then say, well, you're in violation and here's your big bill. That sounds like a great program. Um, do you know anyone who's used it in the past? There are some people, uh, like I said, in the city city center here. And when I've talked with them, I've been doing home inspections, and I can see the work, and I ask the home sellers, they'll say, uh, if I recall, the, they had a floor drain that drained to the sanitary sewer, and the floor drain was accommodating any leaking water from their foundation, and then go in the floor drain and then in the city sewer. So the city came in, they actually capped off the floor drain so it was no longer connected to the city. They dug a hole in the basement floor, installed a sump pump crock, put in a, a nice sump pump, and then they poured that outside the way it should be. So it was all new work, and they said, yeah, they came in and took care of all of it. And they, they the workmanship looked really nice to me. That sounds great. So if they determine that your house has already been looked at or that your house is in need of a service, because like say the prior homeowner had it checked out and got it repaired or your house is just perfect and has been connected to the sewer lines accurately, what would uh, the results be there? I don't know if you would be aware that the prior, previous owner had it checked out. So when you live on the north side, you've got a floor drain and it's still connected to the city sewer, but you don't have hardly any seepage into your basement. So I don't know if they want to go through the effort of putting a sump pump in because you don't need a sump pump. And the amount of water that goes down your floor drain is can be measured in gallons, not thousands of gallons. It can be measured in cups, pretty much. Right, so it doesn't make any economic sense. So uh, that link would be the only way I could, I could reference you to calling them and asking them, say, hey, here's where I live because I just got the house. Do I need to have this looked at? And they may, they may have records that it already was. And if you're looking at that link of the map zones and one of the areas said that it hasn't been looked at or it's not being evaluated right now, what do you think the um, options would be in the future? So you may live in an area that they may not even uh, be checking. What if you're in a part of town with all newer houses? Well, you could still have a sump pump that somebody installed and they put it into the city sewer because it's easy. It was the easiest way out for them. When we do home inspections, we simply point out to people like your your sump pump is draining into the city sewer and this is not a recommended practice we let the home buyer know that this is not a good idea and i have a little speech i give to home buyers i'll say this does not affect you as a home buyer it affects all of us because we're using the city sewer system i try to appeal to people's um, sense of community. Sense of community, correct. That's a good way of putting it because it's a direct cost for them to fix this and make it right. If only one, I'll say to them, I said, if you were the only person running this into the city sewer, we wouldn't have an issue. But you're not the only person. And so when my understanding is when all these sewer sump pumps kick on and all that water gets to the sewage treatment plant, they have a term for it. I think it's unscheduled discharge. You know, there's there's some technical name for this. What that means is they're putting diluted sewage directly into the river because they can't bottle it, they can't store it. It all comes out of them at once and they can only treat so much in, a, in an hour. So all of a sudden the sewage treatment plant is getting a surge of water. So I got a tour one of the sewage treatment plants, the one on the north side, I believe, back a couple years ago for one of my classes. I believe it was environmental science. Was and that through the city of Springfield? It was through the school I was at. It was through OTC. We got to tour the facilities, and 
I found out that the way Springfield does all their water treatment is nat naturally processed, so we don't use any chemicals, and this results in amazing results, but you got to have that time for those big vats of water to sit so that the bacteria can do their work that they need to do. So they don't put chlorine in the wastewater? To no chlorine, it? it's purely bacteria. They have multiple different pools that the water flows right. into and it just they agitate in, in some and it results in lower E. coli and lower um, water-based um, pathogens. pathogens than even the stream that they're dumping it into afterwards. Right, the water that leaves the sewer treatment plant is cleaner than the water, the river that it's entering, except when you have every sump pump in the city kick on and have all this water flow down there. So that, that's what this whole program is trying to avoid. So if you're interested in using this program, if you live inside the city of Springfield, you can check out the link in the description that will talk about the program more in detail from the city directly, as well as getting you information on how you can be a part of this program if you're interested. If you live outside of the city of Springfield, just search your city's name, private sewer repair program, and something should pop up into the federally funded program. If it doesn't, maybe call your city to get involved and see if they are able to get some of that funding to help out people in your town. Have a good rest of your day. Talk to you soon. This has been a Murawski Inspections podcast. If you want to know more about our services, visit our website at murawskiinspections.com.